Welcome to Canberra. Metalheads. Season 1. The Archives. Alright, let's keep it. Welcome to Canberra Metalheads. We happen to be joined in the studio today with the boys from uh, Grand Duke. So starting from left to right, we've got... I'm Joe, I play guitar. I'm Jason, I sing a bit and yell a bit and scream a bit. I'm Nathan and I play guitar too. Excellent. It's good to have you uh, fellas in the studio and, uh, you know, go through some of the uh, the info about the band and listen to some of your awesome music. Cheers. Yeah, thanks Cheers. for having us. Cool. We sort of um, been branching out recently and um, going, getting into more of some of the uh, more alternative um, scene in, in Canberra and you guys are in the, the hot list of bands that we just had to have on the show. So um, so happy to, to finally uh, get you in here and have a chat. Much appreciated. We um, sort of, it wasn't wasn't a very hard decision to begin with, but what definitely drove it home was uh, the, the Witch, Goal, Witch Goal gig there yeah. at Transit Bar. Uh, seeing you guys and the energy you brought to the stage just uh you know really liven the crowd up and it, it just sort of um it just sort of showed what what the scene's got to offer really um how how was that gig for you guys uh it was great um it was uh, an honor to open for witch skull and i'm i'm glad you mentioned that we brought some energy because that's what we really felt we had to do oh you yeah. guys definitely brought a lot of it. <laughs> oh, it's a difficult slot 8 30 early in the night people aren't drunk yeah we, absolutely yeah i was sort of wondering how it would all go but it went really well well I, I seen the uh i seen the shoes come off and i was like this guy's do- this guy this guy knows what he's doing yeah. that's always better without shoes <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i was so focused on that gig i actually left my shoes on hey normally i take them off yeah, but, yeah. Uh, i'm a big fan of marcus so playing before him hey is a big deal for me yep mm-hmm. yeah yeah and, he's, he's just uh, he's just a wizard on 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 the axe and yeah vocals, he's man. great a wizard only barely covers it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's true. Is something else. That's it. I mean, which skulls recordings are great, but I think when you see him live, the energy that comes out, particularly Marcus, he's playing and he's singing, is just yeah, it's something else. Well, the thing yeah. that threw me off was, like I keep saying, is um, they just didn't stop for the whole set. Mm. They just went song, 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 song. It's just like how yep. loud are you doing mm. that? <laughs> yeah, so loud. <laughs> mm. yep. yeah, yeah. I think they plan it that way, though. It's it's supposed to be a one big, long performance Riff punch. To give you an idea, <laughs> to give you an idea how that gig was for me, hey, is I straight after that gig watched back the Witch Skull footage of it. Yeah. Just one of those dudes had a camera somewhere. Actually, one of their friends. Yeah. And it was awesome. Even on rewatch, what an amazing gig! And it was so fat and heavy and just dominating. Yeah. And then Joe also happened to record our set, and we just recently watched it. And I just watched it and felt satisfied because it was heavy and yeah. it needed to be heavy to open for yep. Witch Skull. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty heavy. Yeah, awesome. yeah. We were very fortunate good. to get that spot. On. There's a lot of local bands, I'm sure, that would have loved to do it. So I think you guys were definitely a good, good pick for that, though. Oh, thank yeah, you. cool. Thanks. Yeah, we hope hmm. so. People yeah. seem to like it, so that was a relief. <laughs> yeah. You know, we wasn't sure if we just... I, I feel like I did my job because Marcus liked it, to, to be direct about it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. We we um, we um had him on the show prior to the gig, and, you know, they were all super stoked about the uh, tour kicking off, and I'm glad that they kicked it off uh, the right on the right foot. Mm-hmm. And um, I think they all had fun. I mean, obviously, um, tours sometimes can be a little bit stressful and, and, and full on. Uh, especially with like a new record label and everything that they were on so i mean it's it's cool to see it all all started well and it, it sparked something cool here as well so it's helped everybody out really which goal bringing the community closer to <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah no we picked up your ep we listened to the custodian what was that like to uh record or you know and play is there any sort of influences into that song that that sort of stand out um, should i um say something about sure. the starting of the recording and then you can maybe take over Go for it. uh joe and this is probably has to be a little bit holistic so it will cover a little bit of the origin of the band as well absolutely but uh yeah Grand Duke is is Joe's uh, brainchild, and we're we're pretty much just hired guns along for the ride <laughs> that don't get paid except in love <laughs> and beer. <laughs> but regardless, Joe approached um, approached both Nathan and I separately at different times, um, saying that he'd been writing some stuff on a seven string, which was different from Eyes to the Sky, his previous project, 
uh, and he obviously uh, knew us from uh, Tundral and um, suggested that we might work well together. So I probably spent probably four or five Friday nights over the course of about six months just sporadically around at his place. But he had a little uh, little home studio set up in the bedroom upstairs. He yep. lives in an he lived at that time in an apartment block, by the way. Yeah, you know, yeah. with many yeah. other houses yeah, attached. Yeah, so I remember one particular Friday night, there was one song that had this quite a large scream in it, yeah. which we actually recorded at 1am on a Friday night. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and, every, and of course, when you're recording, you don't hear anything except for yeah. the screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so his neighbourhood would have got... They, they heard the early demos. They yeah, <laughs> they heard... Well, they heard the early vocal demos yeah, with no yeah. music, and I'm sure, um, yeah, quite surprised police were called... Yeah. yeah, so basically I would I had the songs written and I would get Jason to do his parts and Nathan to do his parts on guitar, so the structure was already there. Yep. That song, I think, because it's got that big opening riff, was one I always had in mind to have first up on the EP and then in the live setting it works as well in that way. It's a good opening song. Yep. It's good just to um, kind of give people a good kicking first off and grab yeah. their attention. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think it's, it's a good um, encapsulation of Grand Duke as a whole. It's got some really melodic sections. You know, a few big riffs, um, kind of the stuff that I think makes up Grand Duke's all captured in that song. So, Excellent. Yeah, it tends to mm. work well. It's interesting that you call us alternative. We'd, we had been pondering what genre we were. Yeah. And uh, the closest we'd come up to was progressive stoner. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I heard someone Doom say style. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard someone say that and I liked it because I prefer to not say anything and just if someone's going to talk about us wait till they say something and hopefully they describe it because I'm still trying to work it out. Yeah. But it was Rowan from Better Music who plays a lot of guitar. He's very yeah. good. And one day I'm walking out of Better Music and he just randomly walks up to me from around the back having a cigarette and he goes, hey, Nate, how you doing, man? Yeah, good. He said, that gig the other night was really awesome. I went, oh, thanks, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it You and you caught our set. That's great. And then he just paused, took a token in his diary and he said... <laughs> I think you guys are like really progressive stoner, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I yes we are. Going. I'm waiting for help. And I said, hmm, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. So let's go with that. Progressive stoner. I like that. Yeah. 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 I don't know what to call it, but it's got that. I'll t- I tell you what, it kind of fits with my experience of this whole beginning story is all my job was is joe says come around and blast some leads and i um i just listen for the key and blast some solos over the whole thing on a seven string which are well i did on six strings and then later i had to work out how to play a seven string mm. and work out what the hell he's playing <laughs> and learn the entire songs yeah so anyway it was pretty funny yeah, that was kind yeah. of yeah. that was the process for yeah that, that was the AD thing there was no that. lead up or getting to know the songs it was like turn up at joe's place and then listen and react yeah, and yeah. I, I had no intention of them ever being played live at that point. It was just something I wanted to record. So we've had to go back and learn them and figure out how we do it live. And But originally it was just, yeah, just get these guys who I really admire from their other bands. Yep. And like Kirky and, you know, people know Jace and Nath from Tundral and Covers Nights and, yep. you know, really seasoned guys and just get them in and, and make my stuff look good. Yeah. <laughs> well, is that another way of saying we're salty? Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Season. Um... No, it definitely shows in the music how you um, got that really organic vibe about about the sounds and how it all came together like in a natural way. Yeah, every session was fun and yep. just productive. Like we we always came away with something, so it was, wasn't hard at all. It was mm. easy. Yeah, it shouldn't be hard. No, mm. exactly. It, it definitely goes to show, and uh, it also leads to um, you know you being able to play with multiple bands as well because that sort of um, you're not pigeonholed hold into a genre you can sort of you know you can um, work closely or or sort of um, contrast with other bands to make yeah. a good set so it also opens opportunities for uh, for live gigs as well yeah I agree we can either mm-hmm. be the softest band on a bill or the heaviest yeah like, depending on who else we're playing with exactly and, yeah we can just kind of fit in anywhere yeah yeah, no, definitely. It's uh, it seems to be a um, a bit of a theme that we've had all, with a lot of our alternative bands that, um, and part of the reason you know we can have them um, work so well on the show is because they do fit into that category of like they're alternative. That's about the only sort of 
wide paintbrush I can paint it with. I can say they all fit in under that category yeah. because, yeah, I, I mean, the scene's getting to the point now where we've got so many sub-genres and, 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 and categorizations that we, it's nearly better off just keeping it back to general. Like, you know, just just like when you used to buy CDs and it'd say, here's the metal section. Yeah. Or, you know, here's the punk section. Like, there was no... Yep. Yeah, you yeah. can go so niche on how you carve it up. And yeah, it's just yeah, exactly. Like and you probably end up missing a lot of good stuff because yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. But, like, the, the Witch Skull gig was a good example. The three bands that played have, like, similar influences i guess but all sound but really all different. very and different if, mm. for me as a punter that's a good night like i don't want to see three bands that sound the same exactly By the time you get to the headliner you're kind of over it you know yeah exactly yeah um no it, it it's definitely better to have it that way i think that it keeps it more interesting and flows a little better and there's so many good bands in canberra yeah exactly all and these different styles so we're really discovering that um, with the show and just branching out and finding all those like hidden gems that normally you know you wouldn't come across unless you went out to gigs um, and you know, at, or or you knew you knew them when they're in a so another project or something like that, and you followed them to a new band. You know, much like what you guys did with with Tundral and and now in uh, Grand Duke. So uh, yeah, on that, um, you guys have mentioned that you're on, with Tundral before. Um, what's the sort of background of um of you guys in the scene? I mean, we've we've mentioned Grand Duke and Tundral. Uh, how long have you guys been playing music for? Well, I started my first band when I was twelve. Um, played my first gig when I was 13, so 30-something years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Tundral? That's been a thing. Tundral, a um, well, Tundral officially started in 2012, but we were Buff Tundral before that, uh, which formed in 94. Oh, really? Yeah. And we moved to Canberra in 95 uh, and played Prime as... Prime time, by the way. Yeah. 90s. As Buff Tundral That's through awesome. the end of the 90s. And that was, as they said, a fantastic time, you mm. know. And we were sort of you know, playing with uh, the Henry Zangers and the Liquids and the uh, yep. and the Alchemists and the Smegs and, and all those fantastic bands. Yep. Um, and the scene was alive and vibrant. And... Um, yeah, we were going until 98 when Nath went, and then we kept going uh, until about 2001. Okay. Um, and then we both went out into our musical wildernesses for about a decade before. Yeah, feeling yes, and I just ran and we did that. Hey, we matched about 10 years just Exodus, Exit Music, and then we came back eventually. Yeah. And we met up again, and it all just was right again. Mm. Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, it, it's good to see how it can come full circle, especially um, in the Canberra scene. You see a lot of the time someone might try a side. Pro We've seen that with um, James doing Knights of the Spatchcock, and yep. now he's back to doing what he's normally doing with Ca Clarity of Chaos. Yep. Um, I think that the scene just sort of it cherishes good musicians, um, and and by and large, it's a really open, uh, really friendly scene too. Yeah. Where, oh yeah, absolutely. Where you know um, you you want to work with other people you want to play with other people yep because not only are they great musicians but they're just good people yeah yep. yeah yeah you know what i got that actually told to me like as a reflection from an out-of-towner playing a gig here you yeah. know that trolled yeah, yeah gig yep. toe hider played and i got along with the drummer from toe hider very yep. well yeah and he just was rambling about how much he used to he be the drummer playing. of chimera did you know that i didn't know that hmm. no Right. Side yeah. thing. <laughs> and he, 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 side note, yeah. <laughs> he just um, was raving about how much he enjoys playing in Canberra. Yeah. Because he gets the vibe that everyone is there because they really love music and they all are supporting each other. Yep. And he basically described how I see the Canberra music scene is it's like that. It's completely open. Everyone's helping each other. No, that's what the band good. scene's like. Everyone wants everyone else to succeed and... Yeah, and yeah, they support any side projects that someone, some people do. And, um, like, just back to James, um, when we were uh, talking about when he went from, you know, his usual heavy stuff into Nights, he said that it's actually helped him with his heavy stuff because mm. he's had that alternative influence. Yep. Um, so I think that... Uh, 
all in all it sort of makes makes everyone um improve anyway it's just it, like sometimes you need to take a step sideways to take a step forward as they say yeah absolutely like playing with different people you you pick up something from everyone you play with you can yeah. only get better yeah. yeah yeah exactly and, and um what about yourself joe so i was in a my first band um band called eyes to the sky and we yeah. i think we started probably started doing gigs about 2010 i think and we were together for about five years um and there yeah and like you said now the bass player Wombie, he's in renegade peacock the singer darren was in impairment yep um so that was, that was a fun band we had some good shows uh, and that's how i met these guys was playing shows seeing their band getting to know them a little bit and then i started writing this other stuff that became grand duke and i just thought oh man that tundral singer would sound good on this have a chat to him turns out he's a good guy i'm thinking you know oh, yeah, i'll ask him if he wants to sing on my stuff fully expect him to go no and he was like yeah okay and i was like oh okay now i better actually get my act together and <laughs> you know, get some stuff down and then through tundral hearing nath's playing and you know nath's got all the chops in the world but he's a very tasteful player i'm like that's exactly what i want i want him to i want someone to play the solos that i'm rubbish at Yep. on the songs you know and I've, all the, the songs need that second guitar so it's just it all worked out really well and then through their connections we need a bass player and they're like oh, we'll get Kirky from Test Bed and I was like oh, okay <laughs> that'd be great that worked out great yeah. I've been a fan of Kirky for about 10 years mm-hmm. so yeah hence the Test Bed are a great band I mean, most people who got to shows probably seen them in Canberra they're amazing yep um, so he managed to get Kirky on board. He liked the song, so that's kind of solidified the lineup. And then the drummer Marty was in bands in Canberra back in the day. Serenade moved to Brisbane, played in a prog band up there, and he'd come back recently, and that kind of worked out as well. And he's amazing, great guy as well. So I'm very fortunate. Yeah, he's the musician in the band. Yeah, our he, drummer. Yeah, he, he translates all. <laughs> he the knows all stuff the fractions do. of all the times. He's yep. ridiculous. He's hey. great. I'm very fortunate that the songs I write now have all these amazing musicians that are willing to bring them to life and. We get to do it live, so yep. it's just yeah, it's all just worked out. Like I said, very organic. He says he's fortunate. Yeah, it's not really that way. It's the other way around. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, it's good to hear that you guys are um, all this, all passionate about it as well. Like and. All the while, you feel There's not like, really much point in doing it otherwise, is it? Yeah, well, that's true. But it's like, like we're I'm doing it for the cash. Cash. At the same time, while, while you while you think that um, he's, you know, he's grateful and he thinks you're grateful, it's just this mechanic that constantly evolves. Um, it's just a mutual appreciation. Yeah, so. I first heard Joe playing Ice the Sky. Hey, I'm a fan of him. That's how it worked out. Joe, yeah. Joe was, like, I think, wow. it's fair to say, technically the rhythm guitarist of Eyes to the Sky. Um, and we know and love Neil, who is the lead guitarist as well, but we were instantly taken with Joe's rhythm playing. Yeah. And we, I remember quite early on, we looked at each other, Nathan and I, in, in the crowd as we were watching him play, and it was yep. like, we point at Joe and he's the songwriter. That was just so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Cool. And I yeah. think that it takes that, like, um, keen eye that you'd have from being in the scene, you know, and knowing... Um, the process of writing to pick that up Mm. Um, I was saying well I was talking to reggae recently about you know learning to play guitar can turn watching live music into a massive observation sheet instead of just watching the show it can yeah Um, yeah so Mm. like you guys can pick that up because you've written and you you and uh, you play Whereas just your standard punter might not realise that. They're mm. just like, oh, that was a cool band. Whereas you guys see each individual yeah, piece. Yeah, I, I think mm. we all um, go through phases during every set of every show that we attend. Mm. You know, we go through the analytical phase at first where we'll check out all the gear and we'll see, you know, what tech they've got on stage. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then we listen for, for you know, their technical ability. Yep. And then at the end of the day, none of that matters. <laughs> Is the song good? And mm. does the song make you feel anything? Yeah. Absolutely. Because if the answers to those questions are yes, then nothing else matters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we were saying before about different genres of music. You can boil it down to that. Do you like that sound? Mm. Yeah, it doesn't then, make you yeah. react to it. Yeah. Mm. Do, like, if you react positively to something, does it matter that it can be pigeonholed into a genre? Yeah, you don't want to be mm. playing to a room full of musos who are stroking their chins, you know, assessing your technique. Yeah. That's, that's not a fun crowd, and that's yeah, not, yeah. it's not going to be a, a decent crowd either. Like, yeah. like I, I was always self-taught and more interested in songwriting and arrangements and not by any means a technical or super competent guitarist but yep the actual songwriting is the part that gets me excited so 
Excellent. And that was true of my other band, and I, you know, I probably got up on stage well before I should have, and played some horrible. Sets, That's not but, true, but um, <laughs> it's all part of it. Yeah. Well, I think that um, just from what I've heard from other bands, just said that taking that first step onto onto stage is the most important. So, I mean, you've taken that early, even if you weren't, you know, quite mentally prepared for it. I think that it makes you who you are. So that helps out. Yeah. I got a um, a really early taste of that. As, yeah. as I said, I played my first gig when I was 13 and it was an outdoor show. I still remember it and I will always remember it. But we were playing a song that we'd written about a dude who died in a car accident. We are playing on the corner in a park. Right. And as we're seeing this song, there was a car accident. And I thought, oh, yeah, this is the power of music. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. what I'm going to do forever. Yeah. Well, welcome to show business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Luckily, the dude didn't die like he did in, in the, the song. song, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, did you pay them to have the <laughs> No. <laughs> I was 13 and a musician. So, thought, yeah, thought there was no like money it. coming from anywhere. <laughs> I, started, I started gigging at 15, eh? So, pretty young like him, too. Yeah. Yep. Some of my best memories were the teenage gigs. Yeah, Back in well, the early days. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we've mentioned on the show about the power of the Yuffie gigs that used to happen around the place. Um, and also. Um, how, how a lot of the bands we've had have said the same thing. They've start they started young. Um, I mean, we we were um, went back to Witch Girl real quick. We were talking um, when we we're talking to those boys. They said, "Man, we used to live so close to the school. We used to just play after school in his garage when we were like fifteen, just hanging out there yeah. playing." In Marcus's garage. Yeah. Just getting the reps in early. Yeah, yeah. just getting getting in young and you know look look what became of that so uh, no it's a, i think it's a big thing and um i don't think that honestly age really um should influence it at all on either end of the scale like no. i think that it's you know if you're passionate and you want to and you want to do it doesn't matter if you're you know young or old it doesn't like i think it'll always just be the sound sound doesn't discriminate on age and you've got to go through those learning experience of, of getting up there and having your gear fail and yeah, playing yeah. to no one you yep. know and just all those sort of knocks you take as part of learning to actually play on stage silver chairs may be a good example you know in that when they were sort of thrust into the world of music they really were still learning how to play their instruments and sing yeah. but they were great songs yeah Did that okay for them. and yeah <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, you know, even as you know they got better and more accomplished as musicians, it was still those first songs that I would come back to. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. represents the scene mm. um, as far as those early days. Yeah, but in, in terms of Grand Duke, um, when you guys saw us, that was probably only our fifth show, or maybe. So we haven't done a lot of gigs, but because the guys are all so experienced... Like the, guys. Get up, the guys like he removes himself from that well you know what I mean just get up there with confidence <laughs> everyone's played a lot of gigs separately in their own band so yep. it all comes together pretty well yep um, yeah I think that knowledge is easily sort of if it's not completely transferable it's definitely like it definitely helps just it, that level of comfort you know? yeah. yeah when yeah. you have ears as well as um, some technical ability then and you're looking around and listening to the other people in the band, it's really easy. Yep. And it's quite simple to predict where things are going. Yep. But... Um, you can see the early... Uh, you can see, like, from experience, you know, what you've seen before and then apply it to your current situation. Mm. And, and sometimes you do that subconsciously, I, I think. Um, I mean, um, I, I've seen bands before, you know, have... You know, leads fail, things like that, and it's all stuff that had just happens on stage. That's how you deal with when it? When you got seven yeah. leads and one of them's got a loose connection, yeah, uh, you know, you just the one thing you can't do is stop. Yeah, exactly. That's what you yeah. learn. Pedal boards are the devil for that. Yep, you just got to keep soldiering on. So yeah, yeah, that's that's something I learned at a young age is to just not stop. And I've taught guitar a decent amount, and I teach that to kids. Yeah, like, I mean, I teach it to them repeatedly because they know what to play now, and they stop. <laughs> don't stop yeah, they stop and they self evaluate and criticise yep you don't do that you just keep going <laughs> don't yeah. talk it's a bit like he says the self abasement thing yeah. you're just going to ruin yourself you're never going to be able to play you live keep going and let the 50 yeah. drunks in the crowd just keep assess playing. your performance <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got to finish the song and they're probably less harsh than yourself oh you play the worst show ever 
and you like you're dirty on yourself and you walk off stage and some girl come and go man that was awesome you yeah. guys were so tight that was great yeah. <laughs> thanks good, good set man yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah. we we're talking off mic about um some you know um studio time and things like that recording um how's how's that going is there any sort of uh any any finer details on that you want to share with the with the audience yeah so uh the ep been playing songs off is a good couple of years old now we're pretty keen to get something new out and we've got i don't know maybe somewhere between five and eight songs demoed out to a reasonable level most of them yet to have vocals um it's because the singer's slack yeah, um. <laughs> I think I've finished an EP with Joe. Is how I'd word it. Hey, it just yeah. gets vocals on it. I've got leads all over it, and it's all awesome. Yeah, so it's just a matter of um, yeah, getting in and doing the work. We've got drums down for a few of them, but we need to get Marty onto the other songs. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. I think it'll be a big step up from the, the first EP. We're more of a band band now than you know that we've been playing shows and yep and uh, jamming together. So. Pretty excited about it. Uh, there'll be a few epic long songs and a few new things that we didn't, some new ground to cover that we didn't really get across on the first EP. So oh, like what? Some melodic clean parts. Oh, so there's some more, d- more dynamic yeah. range, hey, because there's also this eerie sort of instrumental thing, mellow thing called Nord that I, I wrote and mm. Joe's once on there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So no lyrics, no words. Yeah, so on the, on the gig front, we're uh, just keeping things open at the moment. Um, hopefully have some shows to close out the year but yeah nothing confirmed at this stage so cool we use that time to focus on the recording and um hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later yep awesome well you know um gigs is always a good place to try try out some songs i mean you we'll talk we're talking off mike also about the um you know the witch goal gig and when you played a couple or at least a song that isn't on the on the ep so it's it's good to see that sort of thing come into press and and um get released so yeah and and that song's uh we've played that in most of our sets if not all of them that we've done and it's gone over well with the crowd so it's been tested so excellent happy to get that one in the next recording yeah Mm. it's not nothing like trying it on a live audience and i think the audience likes being a test dummy quietly (laughs) well that's the first green duke song we've actually sort of been able to do that because we did everything backwards and we recorded the ep before we even all been in the same room together let alone had a jam or played shows yeah 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 it is the opposite to how jason and i have done recordings before hey, ever opposite. yeah it was totally different for us and that was part of the part of the appeal at first yeah except that yeah the rest of the guys are just too magnetic <laughs> we just have to hang out <laughs> yeah well we're, um we've talked of this on the show as well um previously and it seems to be an ongoing theme that it seems like the secret to a band that um, connect well with each other um, on stage means that they also connect well off the stage. Yep, so it's necessary. Yeah, it's it, it definitely helps with that dynamic. And, you know, you've probably seen in um, the major bands around the world, um, whenever there's personal issues in the band, it definitely reflects in the stage. So it's good to see you've got a good, tight bunch of people um and you know it reflects on on your um, performances and extra level of 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 friendship as well yeah it's always a good time Mm. so that makes it Mm. easy to be productive and and write songs and record them and it's for me it's always a bit of a thrill just seeing the layers come in when the guys start doing their thing it's always better than what i had in mind so you know it's all all about communication eh like musically and uh yeah i can't imagine what it'd be like if you're not getting along Oh well, I can. I've experienced it. It's pretty, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty yeah. crap. Yeah, sometimes you need to go through it to understand how um how much you don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's good to hear that you guys have got got some future prospects, and um you know we're super excited to see uh, more products from you guys. You've Thanks, guys. Uh, cheers you know, nailed it in the short amount of time that you've been together, and um and produced such a cool album um already so i mean if the if the direction's up and up and it's very promising yeah thanks for your support hey, can guys. i just I say it. can i just say if i play in magic rob universe <laughs> and not this monday but the following monday i'm playing the bootlegs at the phoenix yep which is where that band was born it's pretty special excellent it's freaky i'm yeah. talking naked people on stage tambourine solos all do you get naked no, I don't, but people do. I'm not coming in. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, like that goes for um, 
you know anything we like to do a bit across um promotion so i mean obviously um you guys have also um got tundral as well so it, it, um, well, tundral is in mixing phase at the moment yep for volume two yep. uh that's being mixed um nathan and i have been starting on the writing with volume three already though yep. um and we've got three songs demoed for that already uh, so we're definitely looking forwards and moving forwards. Mm -hmm. We've just been very quiet publicly. Yep. And we will continue to be quiet publicly until, uh, well, actually not for that much longer. We're, we're going uh, to give everyone a, a bit of a precursor. Before the album, we're going to release a track for free before we release the album. Mm. Yep. And we're actually going up to record that song next weekend. Yeah, oh, excellent. Mm. Yeah. That's a good little drop on the show. So it's good, good to hear that you guys are going well as Tundral as well. Like I said, I like we're here for Grand Duke, but I definitely like to promote any other, you know, um, any other works that you guys have got going. Cool. So yeah, cool little drop there. So uh, it's been the guys from Grand Duke, and also um, we've had a little bit of info there on Tundral. So check out. Um, First up, check out, check out um, Grand Duke on social media um, for any upcoming releases and and um, and movement in the scene um, because I can see these guys going up and up. So check out Grand Duke and also um, check out s some of the other projects as well. Um, yep, check out Hens of Test Bed too. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, and, and and that goes to any other other mu um, bands or music that you hear on the show. Check out yeah. all social media. Definitely promote that and, and get promote, out to gigs. Yeah, prom promote. Uh, go and check out live music, and if uh, you you can support them financially by buying their products because that's what helps keeps the uh, keeps the the wheels turning. It does. Thanks very much, cool. guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, th thank you for coming on the show. We are Grand Duke. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Canberra Metalheads. Excellent. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Bianca, Bianca, bam! <laughs>